just started. <laughs> it looks like bit light anyway. <laughs> I, know it, I know it. This time change right here is a hard one to adjust to. And this is the real time. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is the real time. So we got any prayer requests tonight? Yeah. I do. Okay. The one we've been praying for so long, Patsy Williams. She's on uh, hospice, but she's on, uh, they put her on, what kind of care? Comfort care. Comfort care. They call all the kids in. They're in today. Okay. So, yeah. Any day, y'all just keep praying. Is How was your brother doing? I heard he had a wreck. <coughs> his son. Oh, his son. Oh. He told his truck. He broke his neck two places in his sternum. He's a thing now. He, he deserves it. He uh, claimed he tried to, to dodge a deer. <laughs> we don't know, but he's paying the price, and so am I. <laughs> What's his name? Michael. Michael Harry. Michael Wayne Harry. husband Butch McIntosh had surgery today to remove a kidney and it was cancerous. Pray for him. Tiffany Engeldow's family, remember? Tiffany Engeldow, she passed away this morning. I spelled that. Tiffany T I F F A M Y? Engeldow? Engeldow. E N G L E. D-O-W-E-L. Is it D-O-W? I think it's D-O-W-E-L, I think. I got it. Close enough. Yes, sir. Jim's going to have CT scan on her lungs tomorrow. I told her. And then I got a brother to have a colon surgery on the 16th. What's it? What's your brother's name, Sam? George. Anyone else? Remember the Brandon Sprayberry family, the young man from Atlanta that got killed Monday night. I saw. How? What happened? I uh, want to understand that there was kids playing and another with guns, and he said it wasn't loaded, and he pulled the trigger and it shot shot him in the chest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shot himself? No, another child. Another child. Yeah. Oh. I saw his obituary today, but I didn't didn't know anything about it. Was this the 18 year old? Yes. He shot himself. I was reading about it, but it didn't give a lot of detail. Anyone else? The the kids. Okay, brother Dale, would you lead us in prayer? Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you. We ask that you forgive us for all our sins, Lord, and shortcomings that we come to. Lord, we just ask you to be with the people that's on the prayer list. Lord, that you know each and every one of their needs, whether it be doctors or it's just health problems, Lord. We can just touch each one of them as according to your will. Because your will be done and be the best decision that could ever be made. Lord, we just ask you for all the thanks that you've given us and all the thanksgiving that's coming. Lord, we just praise you and just ask for all your forgiveness for where we're shortcomings. Lord, we just ask you to be with the Brother Gary tonight as he gives us the word. And that we can absorb it, Lord, and we can understand it. In Jesus' name, I ask these things. Amen. 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 All right. So we are in uh, chapter 27 of Deuteronomy. So if you have a Bible, go ahead and get turned to that. 26. 26. 26. Yeah. Okay. That worked. I made notes for all over it, too. <laughs> all right. So uh, we're going to, it's, uh, I thought, Don, is it the 20, 26? Is it? 
Okay, I just miss. I saw the. Uh, I saw it on uh, on, on Facebook. I just didn't take note of where it stopped. Okay. All right. If somebody would read for me the first eleven verses of chapter twenty-six, please. And it shall be when you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance, uh, and you possess it and live in it, that you shall take some of the first of all the produce of the ground which you bring in from your land that the Lord your God gives you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to establish his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at the time, and say to him, I declare this day to the Lord my God that I have entered the land which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from the hand of, and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. You shall answer and say before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Armenian, and he went down to Egypt and sojourned there, few in number, but there he became a a great, mighty, and prosperous nation. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted <coughs> us and imposed hard labor on us. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our afflictions and our toils and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with great terror and with great signs and wonders. And he brought and he has brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now behold, I have brought the first of the produce of the ground which you, O Lord, have given me, and you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall, and you and the Levite and the alien who is among you shall rejoice in all the goods which the Lord your God has given you and your household. Amen. When you look at this scripture right here, uh, it, you, it, it kind of goes back over the things that they had experienced, but it was talking about when they got into the, the land that they were fixing to possess, that the first year that they yielded crops out of that land, uh, the Lord wanted an offering out of it. Uh, what does it kind of tell us? Did it tell you anything? This ain't something they did. It's not a free will offering. It's something the Lord wanted them to do. It's something He required them to do. And and the Lord feels like if He's going to bless us and give us and, and take care of us and furnish for us and provide for us, that we ought to be able to, to uh, offer uh, uh, sacrifices unto Him. And we ought to be able to give back. Because everything the Bible says that uh, the earth and everything they're in is His anyway. And so all that we have, He gives to us. It's on loan to us. You can call it yours if you want to, but you, you might hang on to it till you die, and then somebody else is going to get it, okay? Mm -hmm. And so yeah, that, uh, I don't know how many people has owned the house that I live in. I think uh, we bought it from the people that built it, but uh, they're, they're both dead and gone now. It's not their house anymore. It's not their land anymore. And that's the same way with everything. So the Lord wants us, as He blesses us in our lives, He wants us to return uh, and worship to Him uh, the, the things that He has blessed us with. And, and I want you to notice here in, in the first 11 verses here, he, he takes them kind of on a little journey back from the time that uh, Jacob went to Egypt. And, uh, and he, he, he just says, that, uh, that you went in a few a few people and you came out a great nation, very prosperous. Well, we know the way that happened. And, and it did happen because God caused it to happen. But they went through 430 years of torment and slavery. And it started off really well with 70 that went in there. That's how many went in with Jacob with 70 souls. And, and when they came out, there was over a million of them. And so they did increase in numbers, but it wasn't easy. It wasn't anything that, but the Lord had put them there uh, to take care of them, and he left them there for that long a period of time. And, and it's something when you look at that, you think, well, Lord, why didn't you just leave them there until the, the famine was over with and let them, leave, let them leave? It didn't work that way, did it? He left them there for a purpose, and it had been prophesied earlier that this was going to happen and take place, that they were going to be in a foreign land for 400, 400 years or longer. 
which it wound, it wound up being that long. So we can't understand, yes sir, somebody say something? We can't understand the providence of God and, and the ways of God is past our understanding, but he had a purpose and a plan for every bit of this. And he waited, if you'll notice, he waited until they cried out and asked him to deliver them before he ever did anything. And so Moses, he already had Moses set up and ready. He knew all this was fixing to take place. Moses was already 80 years old when he got the word it was time to go to deliver them out of Egypt. And so uh, the Lord was preparing all this stuff, and, and that's the way he does. Listen to me. What we're experiencing now in this country, and, and you know, we, we kept hearing about this big red wave and all this kind of stuff. It didn't happen. And, and we need to remember something. We, well, we, no, I, I'm going to tell you this. You need to remember this. Well, the Lord expects us to pray. He wants us to pray. He wants us to ask Him for things. And he, uh, prayer is very influential with God. Uh, the Lord hears our prayers. But I'm going to tell you, there are just some prayers that you're going to pray to God that He is not going to answer for Amen. you. Now, y'all listening to me? There's things in this scripture that said that's going to happen on, in this world, on this planet, with, with the people that's here, that I don't care to you can pray till your, your teeth fall out. It ain't going to change it. Answer no. Amen? Amen. There's prophecies that's going to be fulfilled, that's going to be fulfilled. I don't care how much you pray to stop it from being fulfilled. It's going to be fulfilled. Now, I'm going to tell you while we're on this subject, there's one coming one of these days, and his name, he's, he's Antichrist. I don't know what his name is. And he's coming. And I want to tell you right now, he is going to be a political figure. He is going to be a politician. Remember that. A politician ain't going to make peace and safety and salvation in this world. That's already been done by a Savior. A politician is going to bring on the end of the world. So quit worrying about the politicians because God's putting people in places to bring things to a fruition that's going to happen. So quit worrying about those things and accept it the way it is. Now, I don't tell you to quit voting. I ain't saying none of that. I ain't telling you to quit praying for, for our nation. I ain't telling you none of that stuff. I'm just telling you that, that nobody would be in any power of authority in any nation if the Lord hadn't put them there for a reason. Okay? That's why I tell you we don't need to do politics in the church. Amen? We're not about politics. We're about kingdom work. And this ain't the kingdom. Amen? This ain't the kingdom. We're getting ready to go to a kingdom that he's prepared for me and you because we're saved in our work. Our work is to take as many people there as we can and to tell them about Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And, 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 and that's all I've got to say about that. And so he had this plan all the time. They didn't understand it. We didn't understand it. He's going over it, but notice something. He never once in all this stuff mentions one time about all the murmuring, all the complaining, all the people that he killed because they were so disobedient, none of that's here. Uh -huh. Do you see that? Because right. he's talking to the people that didn't do any of that stuff. He's talking to the people that made it to the promised land. Okay? Right. He ain't talking to the people that didn't make it. He's talking to the ones that made it and we're going to make it. He said, this is what I want you to do when you get there. I want you to, when you grow these crops and you, you go out there and you do your first harvest, I want you to bring it to me. Mm -hmm. Amen? He wants the first fruit from us. He wants the best fruit from us. He wants our best. I'm not talking about dressing up. I'm talking about from here. He wants, he wants it from our heart. He wants it because we love Him. Amen? And that's it. That's it. What he wants, and he, so he told him. He said, uh, "He said, uh, I want you to bring it, and I want you to, to to acknowledge why you're bringing it." Verse ten: Behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which Thou, O Lord, hast given me. I'm just going to bring you what you've already given to me. Amen. Have you ever given somebody some money and they took it and then turned it his hand right back to you? Uh-oh. <laughs> I ain't never had any. Yeah. 
I've actually done that. Tried to give somebody some money one time and they get back to me and say, no, I don't need your money. Well, that's not, that's not the same way example here. It's not the same thing. But the Lord gives to us and He wants us to give back to Him. Does He need it? No. It ain't about that. It ain't about that. It's about us being that way toward Him. He, he's already that way toward us because everything we have, He gave to us. And some of us got lots more than others. Some of us don't got much, but it don't matter. He still gave it. Mm. And so He said, I want you to, to bring these first fruits of the land which Thou, O Lord, hast given me and thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God and worship before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing. Not bad things, good things. Now, we can all <laughs> stop and say, well, this ain't going right and this ain't going right and this ain't going right and this ain't going right. We need to focus more on what is going right. Amen? Amen. Now, I've talked to people and they said, well, I ain't having a good day. This, this conked out, this conked out, the washing machine quit, the, the refrigerator kicked the bucket. I tell you, my lawnmower wouldn't start, I had a flat. That sounds like a horrible day, don't it? Still living. Amen. That's normal. <laughs> and that, that, if, if you live, these things are gonna happen to us. Amen. What you need to look at, but look, I got access, I can go get another refrigerator. I can go get another washing machine, huh? You got a house to put that refrigerator in. Yeah, I still got my house still standing. I can get that flat fixed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. We have access to those things. And so this is and, and, and so we need to remember those things. He said, Rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee and unto thine house. Thou and the Levite and the stranger that is among you. Let people see you give to God. Amen. Do you know what? We, 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 we're bad by saying things like, and I'm guilty. I'm not giving money for that purpose at the church. I ain't for that. Amen. The Bible tells us to give. And, and we mentioned this here a while back, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think, on Wednesday night. Once you, get, once you put it in here, it ain't yours no more. Amen. 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 It's His. Uh -huh. And it's to be used for a purpose. And we're going to get into that here in just a minute. There is a purpose for what this is used for. Amen. That's right. Amen. Said we're to be good stewards of his money. I believe the church is going to be held accountable for being steward of his money. Absolutely, but I'm going to tell you what: being a good steward don't require us to be a Scrooge with it either. No, right. Amen. Amen. That that we use that we don't want to give to, and help somebody because we're good stewards. That don't ain't going to hold water with him. Not when he teaches us to help him. <laughs> That's right. When the Bible teaches us explicitly if you have a brother or sister in need you take care of them now, I didn't say in want I said in need Donna yeah. called me on the way here she's, she's making it home because she had to go by the Walmart and I'm, I'm buying another pair of shoes for a little kid at school up there and I said, Don, how many shoes have I bought? She said, you don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and now we're right on this. So. Yeah. You don't worry about how many you bought. You just go buy the shoes. I will buy the shoes. She said, you don't you don't don't be like that. I, I said, Adam and Eve didn't have no shoes, and that really made them mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we can always use good comparisons sometimes. Yeah. But, but you know, the Lord has blessed us. He really has. And, and, and even people in this country, there's a lot of people, there's people we look, and you know what our problem is? is covetousness. Yeah. And that, that is the covetousness, according to the Bible, is, is called idolatry. That, and and the, the, the definition of covetousness that he calls idolatry is being jealous of what somebody else has and you want it. Uh-huh. Uh Number 10, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And so 
so that's what the Bible tells us we don't need to be doing. So we, it, it ain't that we don't have, it's just that we don't have as much as somebody else does. We, don't, we need to get off of that. We need to get away from that. And I tell y'all this all the time, if the Lord was to give me $10 million, I would, you wouldn't see me no more. And he knows it. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you, you know, I hear people all the time say, well, if I win that lottery, I ain't changing bull corn. <laughs> <laughs> but love me. Yeah, you are. You go, brother, brother Drake, going to in Tahiti or something. I'm changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ain't going to change. Yeah, you are. You're going to get the like, rest of them multimillionaires. You're going to say, somebody's going to try to get this away from me. I ain't giving nobody anything. I'm going to go hide. Amen. So he says, do, do this and rejoice in every good thing that I've given you. And, and you know what? We've all got... <laughs> how many of you hadn't had a bite to eat today? Now, Gene, you may not have. But it ain't because it wasn't there to eat. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. How many of you hadn't had a bath in a month? <laughs> <laughs> I said a month on purpose. Some of you may not have one well. yet today. <laughs> I have. I mowed my yard and had that bad. But anyway. But we, we've got access to all of those things. It may not be as nice as, as someone else's, but we got it. Yeah. We need to be glad. We need to thank God that, Lord, I don't have what so -so. I don't care what He's got. I got you. Yeah. And thank you for the blessing you've given me. My goodness. Why don't we get it down and do it right for a while? Why don't we forget all this other hogwash and, and start praising the one who saved our souls and he's building them in your mansion right now. Yes, he is. Amen. You know, these people keep redo, redoing the Bible and everything and now they tell them, oh, you ain't got a mansion over there, you got a room. Really? Look what a blessing this is. Well, absolutely. Yeah. And when everybody in here, is, no matter your age, has had the opportunity. It's, they're abundant. Yeah, it is. It's a blessing to, to have the Word of God and, and be able to, to read and have the Word of God at our disposal. There's countries in this world that would, that would die to have what we have here. Mm -hmm. now, did you know, I've I read uh, articles where where the, they would take, carry Bibles into these countries and they'd have to smuggle them in. And they couldn't, they, they, the way they were having to smuggle them in, they were having to take small quantities of these numbers of Bibles because they, they couldn't get something big and bulky. They knew they'd get caught with it. And when they would get to go into these tribes and into these villages, these people, they might not have the 10, 10 Bibles for 200 people. And they would take pages and tear them out and they would hand them to one another and share them so they can all read the Word of God. Man, we're blessed, aren't we? We're blessed to have it. And yet, uh, you know what the, what the number one thing Bibles do at home? Now, collect dirt. God help us, collect dirt. This is God breathed, this is His Word. This is who He is. This is who shows us who He wants us to be. And I'm going to tell you, in our world today, there ain't very many people who want to be what God wants them to be. Amen. Amen. And so they don't want to know what He wants them to be because they're not planning on ever being that. And let me tell you what, and I don't mean this in an ugly way, but that may be the tares growing in the wheat. Yeah. Talking. Amen. Amen. That may be the tares growing in the wheat. Mm -hmm. Because anybody that say that, I mean, you can't convince me they know Jesus Christ uh -huh. the way they're supposed to know Him. Amen. Well, and here, that, I've seen a little thing where in Dallas, just just right down the road, it's a Satan worshiping bunch, and they're unbaptizing people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, and I thought about that a long time, and so people are going to them and want to be un unbaptized. What do they do to unbaptize them? What's it have to do with being saved anyway? When it's if if you're going to go un 
<laughs> but I, 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 can you no believe we got that far down? <laughs> yeah, we are that far down, Troll. Because yeah. at one time, to be baptized, their their mind was trying to get right. Something something called them to be better than and and to just turn around to turn your back on it completely. It, it, it's got to do with growing in, in the Lord. It, you, you don't get saved and this don't do anything. That, that's where we fail. We, we, we've we got a, a, a couple of generations of people that believe that, oh, I'm saved, I got it going on now. I don't have to worry about doing anything right now. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> it's not the truth. And, and you know, we have to be careful. Uh, we're not judges. You know, y'all know what redacting is? That's when they get a letter and they don't want you to read certain things so they black it out so you can't read it and they'll let you read what's there. I, I saw a thing the other day that had a had the scripture and it was redacted. It was, and the only thing that you could read was don't judge. Don't judge. Yeah, that. that was the only thing that showed up in it. Rest of it was redacted. Uh -huh. Amen. And, and that is the type of Christianity, and it's not Christianity, it's the type of religion that people claim is Christianity today. Amen? It's not. That is not Christianity. I can't understand why anybody won't be unbaptized if <laughs> they have to be afraid of something of being baptized. I, I can't understand why anybody won't worship the devil and say they don't believe in God. That's what don't make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that don't make no sense. And they sure don't want to know what's going to happen to him. <laughs> and all of them that are following him that way. They don't want to know those things. All right. So these things are about the blessings of God. These things, this first fruit, is something that they, they gave and, and they did it in remembrance of the great... <coughs> victory that the Lord had given them and giving them the promised land. All right, somebody read for me verses 12 through 15, please. Thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase the third year, which is the year of tithing, and hast given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the followers, and the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. Then thou shalt say before the Lord thy God, I have brought away the hallowed things out of mine house, and also have given them unto the Levites, and unto the stranger, and to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all thy commandments, which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten thereof in, in my mourning, neither have I taken away aught therefore for any unclean use, nor given aught therefore of the dead. But I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God, and have done according to all that thou hast commanded me. Look down from thy holy habitation from heaven, and bless thy people Israel, and the land which thou hast given us, as thou swearest unto thy fathers, a land that floweth with milk and honey. So here we're talking about the offering of the, of the tithe. Everybody know the word tithe means 10%. And, and what we see here is is that uh, that they they they're giving a tithe of their, their their crops of the things that they have, the tithe of the increase that they have, and and on the third year now now this is going to sound strange to us, but on the third year where did it all go? To the Levites. It went to the Levites and who else? Okay, it went to the fatherless and it went to the widows and it went to the strangers that were in the land. It's where, uh, where, the, where the third year of the tithing went to. Now, now this sounds strange to us, but they did not have welfare, Medicaid. They didn't have those things back then. And so, the, you know, we have those things in this nation and sometimes we complain about having them or drop because we ain't got enough. That's a blessing from God. I don't care if it did come from a crooked politician and it was just designed to give you, to get votes from you. But, and, and they use it to scare us with too now, if you're not careful. But, but the thing about it is, it's a blessing to have those things. Amen? 
Uh, if you're 62, 65 or older and you're drawing Social Security and you're on Medicare, or if you're disabled and you're drawing a disability check and you're, you're on Medicaid, it's a blessing. Amen? Yeah. It is a, a very big blessing. And I'm still glad that we have those things, that, that there's still people who honor God enough to want to give to people, although I think sometimes they use them for the wrong reasons. And we know that they're abused. We know people that, that, that are on disability that should not be on disability. There's a lot of things going on that's illegal. But at the same time, they have, they have these things. And, and you are supposed to take care of the Levite. The person who, who proclaims the Word of God, the person who, who is your designated preacher, you're supposed to take care of that person. Amen? Now, I, I'm, y'all never heard me complain one time about pay around here. Hey? No. Come on. Hey? No, 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 never. You ain't going to. You know why? Because I would preach whether I got paid or not. I'd preach whether I got paid or not. Because God called me to do that. Any God called preacher would. And, and the thing about it is, though, the Lord knows that His Levites were designated by Him to do a work for Him, for His tabernacle, which later on was going to be His temple. He designated these people specifically to do that. And, and because of this calling that He gave them, He took some things away from them that everybody else was going to get. Amen? And so he designated this third year to go to the people, and not only to these Levites, but to the people who were fatherless, who were widows, who could, didn't even have anything to give. He wanted them all to get some of the blessing that everybody else was getting. I heard a fellow say one time, I get so sick and tired of paying taxes. <laughs> and I'm just monkeying with it, but it makes sense now. You know what I told him? I wish I could pay a million dollars a year in taxes. <laughs> got real quiet. A lot of money. A little million dollars a year would be a lot of money. You got money. Hey, yeah, you, you work for H and R Block. If I had to pay in a million dollars, how much have I made that year? Hey, me got three trillion. And instead of saying, "Pray the Lord for my three trillion dollars," I had to pay the thinking government a million dollars of it. God help us, that's who we are. Amen. Hey. That one hurt a little. <laughs> Y'all said I wish we'd let him start chapter 27. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think people mind paying taxes so much as the politicians putting it in their pocket. Well, that's it. it we, we don't get that it's kind of like Putting it in here, you don't get to say where it goes after that. We've got elected people that says where it goes. Whether they're right, wrong, or indifferent, it doesn't matter. That's where it goes. Yeah, we ain't giving it with a fruitful heart. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'm We're not giving it with a thankful heart. Thankful. Your heart. That, that's the part that would bother God. It's not that we would complain about it. That's why they tried to trap Jesus. I don't mind giving it to God. I have a problem with IRS. Well, yeah, but when they, they tried to trap Jesus with the taxes. Uh -huh. Amen? Yeah. And he, he, boy, he nailed it. Hey, God's smart. <laughs> Way smarter than we are. <laughs> they, they weren't smart enough to trap him. Amen? He's smart. Yeah. Well, what about these taxes? And you remember what he said? Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's and give unto God that which is of God. Uh -huh. That is belongs to God. And that's what he said. And do it how? <laughs> With thanksgiving. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Exactly. Now, <laughs> Melissa does my taxes. And she'll let y'all know how I react to that <laughs> <laughs> Now, well, she's sworn to secrecy. <laughs> That's confidential and nothing's going to happen. <laughs> and I will say that when they have to pay, it is not a happy campus. <laughs> nope. Nope. And so, 
So this is what this money was done or used for. It was used for the care of the temple, it was used for the care of the tabernacle, it was going to be used in the building of the temple, it was going to be used for all of these things and to provide a place for people to come to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. And it was going to be shared with those who were responsible for taking care of that building, for taking care of, of the ministry, for taking care of the sacrificial offerings. It was a big job. You know, you know we, we sometimes just neglect to, to realize what Jesus Christ really did for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many, you know what? If, you know why the cattle, the cattle are lowing? They're so happy Jesus came and died on the cross. Seriously. They were butchering them things right and left. I, I, I mean, I sin all the time, don't you? Amen. Well, I just said, come here, Paul, Elsie. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your calf. I'm thinking I have to. <laughs> We're making light of this, but it's not. These people had to kill animals right and left, sheep, goats, cattle. And they had to kill birds. They had to kill everything. They had to have blood running everywhere to cover all their sins up. Jesus did that once and for all for me and you. That's right. Yeah. One time. One time. And it, it, the, that blood that they shed just went into the ground. The blood that he shed is a fountain of blood that flows for us. It never quits flowing. That's what he did. Amen. We, we, need, we need to rejoice and be glad and be thankful and be glad to give. Glad to share. Glad to help. And quit murmuring about everything. Quit griping. Quit complaining. I, 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 I'll challenge you this year. When you go to do your taxes this year, just walk in there and say, Praise the Lord, I'm here to pay my taxes. <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> HR Block probably calls a paddy wagon coming. <laughs> you don't need to come to these people. They're the most marvelous. They'll be calling that wagon for you. <laughs> well, Melissa will be back there. Don't send them to my office. They're nuts. Amen. Amen. Now, now, I want you to listen to this. The Lord did this for a, a, a reason, a purpose. Not, not only did He want us helping uh, the Levite, the pastors, the preachers, the ministers, he, he also wanted us to help the fatherless, the widow, and the stranger. Amen. Now, we have strangers come here all the time. We had one come, what, when, August last, Sunday before last, wasn't it? Sunday night. We have them come here all the time. And I asked, uh, and, and uh, a lot of times they have the same old story. We know that. And I always talk, I, I, we have a great benevolence committee. They had to decide what, what to do and what to help. And, and there's been a couple of times that we've really gone over and helped somebody a lot, and the next year they were back with the same story. So they weren't telling the truth to start with. But I always ask them, I said, I don't care whether you feel like they're snookering you, I don't, I don't care, give them something. And they do. And I thank God for that. We give them something, and there's a reason for that. If you'll remember in Matthew chapter 20, 25, verses 33 through 46, Jesus Christ gives us a scenario of, of judgment. And the people that he was inviting into his kingdom did some of the simplest things that they didn't think they were really doing a whole lot. You remember what they were? Do you? Yes. He, he said, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was sick, you came to see me. Do it for the least. And they said, we, we, we don't remember ever seeing you that way. We never saw you. He said, yes, you did. Yes, you did. God help us to see the stranger as Christ. To see the one in great need. 
is him. And give to them for that reason. Then they will be held responsible for what they do with it. They're going to be held accountable. If they're snuckering us, they're going to be held accountable for that. And he, vengeance is mine, say the Lord, he don't miss nothing. Amen? But sin is Christ. That's what he said in that scripture. He said, when you did this to the least of my children, you did it unto me. God help us to never get so hard and callous toward people. Because what will happen sooner or later is you're going to miss somebody that's really in need. And you're going to insult them and hurt their feelings and they're going to wonder, what did I do? I just need help. Christ is going to see that. You say, well, how do you know that? Because if you read the rest of chapter 25 in Matthew, he addressed the people that didn't give to those that were hungry, those that were in need, those that were without clothing, those that were without shelter. And you know what he did to them? He cast them into outer darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's what this is about right here. And the Lord says, I want you to do it for my glory because I have blessed you and I want you to give it that way. Amen. Y'all didn't know this Old Testament was so full of richness, did you? Oh, it's got it. Everything in the New Testament was based on this. Amen. Amen. It was all based on what we're studying now. And we're at the end of this and Moses is getting all the licks that he can. I know that don't sound right. He's fixing to die. He ain't going to get to go with them. And he's still got this, this thing that's calling inside of him that God has given him. And he wants to make sure they know as much as he can humanly give to them before they go across there. He wants them to know these things because he sees the future blessing. He's, he's going to announce here in, in, a, in a, if you hadn't already, if we hadn't already, I think it's chapter 18 where it announced there's going to be a prophet come up out of these people like unto me. That's what he said. You know who he was talking about? Jesus. He was talking about Jesus Christ. Read Hebrews chapter 3. That's where it says that a greater than Moses had showed up. You know, talking about the stranger, you know, you never know who's going to be in your presence. You know, it says angels can be in your presence. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. believe angels are in your presence oh, yeah. all the time. <laughs> we don't know. You just don't know. But the, the, the Bible might be a test. The Bible says we have those encounters. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. All right. We, we need to move on, I guess. I tell you, this is some good stuff. And, but I want you to look at some verse 14. It says, I have not eaten thereof of thy, uh, of, of thy of my mourning, talking about weeping and, and crying, neither have I taken away aught thereof for any unclean use, nor given aught thereof of the for the dead. Now Troy, <laughs> Benjamin ago, the Satanists are unbaptizing people. Me and Anita, when we went to Hawaii, and Wahoo, where Honolulu is. We did a little island tour, and we went to a place called uh, the uh, the Buddhist Temple. It's a tourist destination. It is an actual Buddhist temple. It's got the gong and all that stuff. But then before we got to that, I, don't, I didn't worship Buddha. He was sitting there in all his brassness, big, big fat guy, sitting there with his legs folded. I never could figure that one out. I can't even do that. But anyway, uh, we went to this place. On the way in, we drove through a, a cemetery to get a beautiful place. Beautiful, beautiful place. Just scenic, beautiful place. And I got to notice some things at the cemetery, and there was blankets spread out with plates, dishes, candles. There was bottles of whiskey. There was six packs of beer. There was food, there was all kinds of fruit, fresh fruit, not flowers. And I got to scratch in my head, and what in the world? These people are nuts. Actually, we actually saw one time a family gathering around and eating. And you know what they were doing? They believed that that dead person is still walking around out there. Mm -hmm. 
And so they bring them their favorite drink, whiskey, beer, whatever. The brand that they like, set it up on their little headstone, they're all cremated. And, and then they said they, they, their favorite food, they'll spread it out and send it out. And you just drive through and looking at all that stuff, my goodness. Well, now this would be the place to be a homeless guy. <laughs> 85 degrees year round, all the food and whiskey and beer you can handle. <laughs> and they think you're one of their relatives. Oh, that's silly, isn't it? But that's what he's talking about here. Uh, he says, you know, don't give all for the dead. The dead don't need anything. Yep, that's right. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't worry about giving for the dead. Give to the living. That's good for God, with God. And so he, I just thought that was humorous. I, when I read that, uh, I, I made that little note about the Buddhist cemetery that me and Anita went through. And uh, we both got to be kicked. We walked through that cemetery. It was amazing what some of the things that were in that cemetery that people had brought left for their their dead, dead loved ones. Mm -hmm. and, and it's hard to keep from making fun of them, but you, you get shot over there for doing that. So we didn't do that. <laughs> but anyway, it was it was weird. And so the, the verse 15, look down from thy holy habitation. He's he's talking to God now. And he said, uh, he, he said, but I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God and have done according to all that thou hast commanded me. You know what one of the greatest accomplishments in your life is? When you can make that statement right there. <clears throat> Amen? When you can make that statement right there, you've accomplished something in this life. And so he was proclaiming that this stuff is done in, in, in accordance to the commandment of God. It was done according to all that the Lord has commanded me. And he said, look down from thy holy habitation from heaven and bless thy people Israel and the land which thou hast given us as thou swearest unto our fathers a land that flows with milk and honey. Amen. He, he was praising God for that. He, he was not going to get to go there. But he was one of these people to praise God for that. Moses wanted to go there real bad. He did. He even tried to barter with God to let him go. You, know, mm, mm, you ain't going. I said no. And <laughs> you ain't going. But he wanted. To. He wanted. He wanted to finish the work that God had called him to do. Amen. And so that was still in Moses' heart. Any questions about this? All right, let's try to finish this chapter. Somebody read for me verses 16 through 19, please. This day the Lord your God commands you to do these statutes and rules. You shall therefore be careful to do them with all your heart, with all your soul. You have declared today that the Lord your God, that the Lord is your God, and that you will walk in His ways and keep His statutes and his commandments and his rules and will obey his voice and the lord has declared today that you are a people for his treasured possession as he has promised you and that you are to keep all his commandments and that he will set you in praise and in fame and in honor high above all nations that he has made and that you shall be a people holy to the lord your God as he promised. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? That, that's some beautiful scriptures right there. Uh, I don't know, uh, I have the King James Version and, uh, uh, and, and it starts off in this verse 16 that thou shalt uh, keep and do the commandments with, with how? With all your heart and with all your soul. That means you are to take joy. Joy. In keeping the commandments of God. Amen. Now the world looks at that differently than us. When, when you keep the commandments of God because you love God, the world looks at you and calls that arrogance. Amen. Don't ever let the world accuse you of being arrogant for obeying God. Don't ever let the world accuse you of being arrogant because you tell them the truth of the Word of God. There is a truth and there is an untruth. Amen? 
And, and basic, basically what's going on in our nation and our churches today is untruth is being proclaimed as the Word of God. Amen? So we have, to, we have to do this, and we have to do it with all of our soul, with all of our heart. That means we have to be solely committed to the Word, to the truth. If the Word says it, that's what it says. And that's what it means. We don't get to redefine it. We don't get to change it to accommodate what we want it to say. We don't get to do those things. And that's what's going on in our world today. Uh, Sister Pat Petty, I hadn't gotten the, the, the she hasn't uh, sent it to me yet because I haven't asked her for it yet. But the last Sunday that I was here, you know, they, they came from the, the United Methodist Church. And I, I'm not belittling them but except for what they have done, what has torn them apart. And in some areas of the country, the homosexuals have taken over the, the United Methodist Church to such an extent that they have a woman who is a lesbian who is over a region of churches. And you should read the letter, the poppycock that she wrote. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters in the Methodist Church. It's got to hurt them to see what's going on. And if she's gonna, uh, if she had it on her phone, I'm gonna try to get her to send it to me. And uh, I'm not gonna, I, I'll send it, I'll let anybody read it that wants to. It's just amazing what she wrote in her view of Christ. She went to the extent to say, we have made an idol out of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, she didn't. No, well, no, she did. Oh, you know, when we idolize, he should be. I mean, he should be our everything. He is our everything. Mm -hmm. If he's not, we're wrong. And, but her reasoning was, if you believe everything he said, then you made an idol out of him, you can't accept me. Duh. Well, hello. <laughs> Duh. Mm -hmm. But it's just that kind of nonsense. Yeah. And... And, and we say, well, it's not so bad in this country. Anytime in this country people fall hook, line, and sinker for that kind of stupidity, that kind of ignorance, that kind of arrogance, and follow somebody that's an abomination to God, saying they're following God, is idiocy. I think, I think it's getting close to time for the Lord to come get us, don't you? You know, it's just not in the Methodist. It could be in the Baptist church. It, it could happen. It's been thought in the in, in our committees and uh, in our conventions for years now. It's been a battle. Uh, Brother Adrian Rogers, when he finally took control of it uh, and became the leader of the Southern Baptist, he he put a, he stymied it. He put a, he squashed it. He put it down. He did it with the Word of God. He got up there with his Bible. And he told them what the Bible said. And there was enough logical people and God-fearing people that listened to him that they didn't bring it up, but it's, it'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Even if they're not, you know, if they're from a different denomination, whatever, we need to pray for each other in that category because I'm telling you, that's why I see the great need for the, the, the people who 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 follow Jesus Christ and believe that He's the Son of God and believe and believe that His Word is an absolute truth and believes that you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and believes in repentance and that you can't do anything everything you want to. We need to get together. We need to merge. Yeah. And, and you know what people are afraid of? One World Church. That ain't going to be the One World Church. No. No. The One World Church is not going to put Jesus Christ up on the throne where he belongs. They're going to put Satan up there. And they're going to do it through lies like that woman said and treachery. So don't be afraid of the unity being that kind of thing. It's not. Not that. 
And verse 17 in my King James Bible says they use a word called avouched. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day. Well, I looked that word up. I don't, I don't remember what yours when you read it. Proclaim. 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 That's what it means. It means to declare uh, as a matter of fact. My Bible says publicly claim. Yeah. It, 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 it means to declare as a matter of fact mm -hmm. or as a thing that can be proved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so we are to serve the Lord that way. Now, how can we prove that He exists? Look around you. He made us here. exists in our hearts. And if we let Him shine enough, people are going to start wondering, what, what, what have they got? What, what do they see that I don't see? Yeah. Let me give you a challenge. Go home, get your concordance, or Google it. You Google for your concordance and type in the word prove in the Bible and go to every scripture that it says prove and look what it says. Mm -hmm. There are some infallible proofs of God. And it's not what you think. It's, there's, there, there were miracles and all that kind of stuff that happened and, and still goes on today. Those aren't the proofs that we get to show off to show that God exists. The proof is when the old man dies and a new one shows up. And the people who knew you see something they didn't ever seen before. Something. What happened to them? That's a proof. They see somebody completely different. They, they, they see a new man. They see a new woman. Faith. They see a new person. The proof comes from faith. Amen. It comes, from, it comes from faith and it comes from grace. It comes from mercy. It comes from Jesus. He's all of those things to us. It comes from having Him in here. It changes who we are. And if we claim we have Him in here and nothing changes about us, we're a liar. Mm, that's right. Amen? Yeah, that's right. We're not telling the truth. That's a fact. Amen? That's the proof. That it is the, the the fact, the matter of fact, the proof that He is in us, and the Lord that hath avouched, proved thee this day, has made you a peculiar people. Mm -hmm. Is that still an application for the Christian church today? Oh, you better believe it. We're not supposed to be like the world. Different. We're not supposed to get even. We're not supposed to render evil for evil, but we do. God help us. You hurt my feelings, I'm going to hurt your words. You talk about me, I'm going to talk about you. God help us. And that happens all the time. <laughs> Even on the highways. It's like a bad drive. <laughs> God, God forgive me. <laughs> I was pretty good this week. I was real good this week. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was exceptionally good this week. The look on your wife's face says different. No, she's wrong. No, yeah, right. Wrong. She wasn't in the car with you, was she? Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I want you to be a peculiar people. As he hath promised thee, and thou shouldst keep all his commandments and to make thee high above all nations, which he hath made in praise and in, in name and in honor, and that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy God as he hath spoken. That's who we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be a holy people <coughs> unto him because he said so. And that's good enough for me and you because he said so. And we're fixing clothes, but look at this little nation over there. That's that little, I mean, just a little bitty speck on the map. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants it. Mm -hmm. Why? Why does everybody want that place? Why does everybody want that place? When, when Antichrist shows up, Satan in the flesh, mm -hmm. he's going to want that place. I want it. Why? 
because that's where the peculiar people of God are. And he wants what's God. He ain't going to get it. Never, never, never. It's going to look like he is. But somebody going to show up. Right there. Right there. Right then. Right now. He's going to show up. And he's going to show out. That's who I follow. And I hope you do the same. I hope you serve him with all of your heart, with all your soul, and quit letting Satan push us around. Stand up. Stand fast. Stand firm on your holy faith in Jesus. And he'll bless your socks off. Amen. May not be the way the world defines it, Blessing, but he'll bless your sight. He'll give you a joy you would have never known any other kind of way. Amen. You know, people get rich. They strive all their lives to get rich. They get filthy rich. We got multi billionaires now. And they still don't know what joy is. Amen. You know why? That ain't where you're going to find it. You're going to find it from Him. And let Him make us a peculiar person. And love Him with all of our heart. We just stand. <laughs> now before we leave, uh, we need to set this podium down. I need a little bit of help. I can get it down, but it's hard to drag in there. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we we want to love, thank you tonight for your word. Thank you, Lord, that uh, it has spoken to us the way it has. And, and to realize, God, that what we have studied here tonight, it, it's just like throwing a big rock in a, in a, in a pond. It ripples and it just continues to go and lap at the banks. And, and the, this that we've studied tonight is still lapping at the banks. It's still here. <coughs> it's still who you are. And we are, Israel failed. They stumbled at Christ. But because they stumbled and he became a stumbling block and a rock of offense to them, we as Gentiles get to know the salvation of our Lord. Can we, we don't deserve it. But He desires it. And I thank You, Lord, that You desire a relationship with us. <laughs> My goodness, what a blessing. What, what a mystery as to why. But you do. You love us so much that you, you left your throne in glory where, where everything bowed to you. And you became a man and allowed the things to happen to you that did. We can't understand that kind of love. But you have it for us. So God, the least we can do is be those peculiar people for you. To know and believe that you are going to come back. God, we mentioned a while ago that you're going to come back and Satan ain't getting Israel. He's not getting Jerusalem. He ain't going to get it. God, before that ever happens, there's going to be something else happens. You're going to come get your church. Lord, help us be ready. Help us to quit complaining and murmuring about everything. Help us to quit focusing on woes and woe is me. What's, what's happening to this world? Read Revelation and look at all the woes that are coming. And they're coming. But help us to look to the hills from which cometh our help. 
It ain't going to come from Capitol Hill. It's going to come from the mouth of God. So Lord, help us to look to the hills. Where our help's coming from to help us to continue to watch, to work, and to wait patiently for our Savior to come get us. And Lord, we're going to be so glad we did. We haven't given up anything in this world that's not going to be given back to us a million fold in the next one. So help us to love you, God, with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength, and endure hardship, endure temptation, and be more than conquerors and be overcomers, Lord. Fill us <coughs> with your Holy Spirit and empower us, God, to, to make up our minds that we're going to serve you and nobody else. Thank you for those that are here tonight. Bless each one, Lord. Be with those that have been called out on our prayer list, those that are sick and hurting, those that have got loved ones that they lost to death. Be with each one, God. And we're going to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> amen.